Well, Zimbabwe's Sports and Recreation Commission has lifted the suspension of three Zimbabwe Football Association board members who were cleared on abuse of office charges. However, the move came after the Southern African nation had already been disqualified from the ongoing AFCON 2023 qualifiers due to a FIFA ban. The world governing body has not yet indicated if it will recognize the reinstated board. Here's Farai Wakatuya with the latest from Harare. After weeks of digging in, the Sports and Recreation Commission climbed down and reinstated three of the six Zimbabwe Football Association executives it suspended last year. The reinstated board members are back at work and say they are committed to working with authorities to support any efforts that will fix the beautiful game. But they will find it difficult to ease the pain of a nation ruining the missed opportunity to fight for a fourth successive berth at the Continental Football Tournament. Of course, it's, it's disappointing, of course, to miss out. But I think there are people who have the role who can answer you better on that one. And I think it can be, I think you know your question, can it, it has people who are, who are really on that job, like to, to be finalizing those things. Or I think it is disappointing for me and also for you, I believe it's disappointing also. I think it's disappointing for everyone. The people the English Premiership-based midfielders referring to are the very authorities whom some are questioning. How can you make a decision after the uh, Africa Cup of Nation qualifiers have already started? It's, it's, a, it's a cause of concern because by the end of the day we have other guys who are still playing soccer uh, and they, their life is on, 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 on soccer, on football. So by not playing the AFCON, you know, it's a bigger disadvantage to them. I believe some of the guys who are working for SRC, they are not uh, sportsmen or sportswomen because they've never uh, uh, went through what we went through during our playing days. At the beginning of the year, the SRC gave a restructuring committee a year to restore order in local football. The committee is saying they're holding consultations. They have been doing uh, in the last few weeks, but uh, we're halfway through the year. So with six months to go, can they sort out the mess in football? You know, many are saying it's pretty basic anyway. We need to look at the junior structures uh, of football if we want things to improve. We need to look at the issues that the SRC have highlighted already of um, women's football being treated the same uh, as men. So uh, really a lot of fans are wondering whether this is going to yield results. If it does, all well and good, but many here are unsure that the costs, like missing out on the qualifiers, will be worth it. Farai Mwakutuya, CGTN, Harare, Zimbabwe. Well, earlier I spoke to Nairobi-based journalist Jeff Kenyanjui on the continued indefinite suspension of Kenya and Zimbabwe from international football and began by asking him, is there an end in sight to this crisis based on recent developments in both countries? Let's take a listen. Uh, well, in my opinion, uh, I don't think so. FIFA is yet to communicate officially to any of the two countries, but at least there's some concerted efforts to ensure that uh, both Zimbabwe and Kenya are back uh, to international football. But no end in sight as, uh, as yet. Now, Jeff, it has been reported that spirited efforts by acting ZIFA President Gift Banda to have Zimbabwe readmitted by FIFA are not bearing fruit. Why is this the case? Well, I think uh, Zimbabwe did exactly the opposite of what uh, FIFA wanted. FIFA want the entire ZIFA board uh, reinstated back, but, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the government of Zimbabwe seems uh, committed to having its own uh, people uh, manage uh, the affairs of football in the country. And that's why they actually appointed a gift. And therefore, um, uh, FIFA has been silent, and that tells you that uh, really they're not interested in what the, uh, the government of Zimbabwe is doing, but they want their own people, including the, the president of ZIFA, Kamambo Park, in charge of football. The term of the transition committee appointed by the Kenyan government has expired this week. The question on everybody's mind is, what's next? Well, I've heard from uh, various uh, sources that uh, uh, the, the committee is trying to get uh, some extension, at least to see off uh, uh, the National Super League, which is the second tier uh, to, to its end, because there are uh, several matches left to the end of the National Super League. So they are very keen on having their term extended, which I think is impossible. So therefore, uh, there's still some confusion. Uh, I've, I've also heard that the, 
they want to have another committee known as the Football Management Committee. So there's still a lot of confusion. We don't know what's going to happen next. And before I let you go, Jeff, briefly tell us just how much are players suffering as the bickering between the two governments and FIFA continues? In my opinion, the biggest, uh, the biggest person who is suffering is the player, actually, and especially mentally, because uh, with the confusion, uh, you know, uh, there are no international matches, and that makes it very difficult for, for the players to, you know, to market themselves. So, uh, and again, uh, investors in, in both, uh, both leagues, uh, be it in Kenya or in Zimbabwe, with the confusion that is and chaos in, in, in football in both countries, then uh, sponsors are already pulling out, especially now if, uh, in Kenya, uh, you know, there are betting companies that have already terminated their partnership, and it's going to happen in both countries. So, uh, of course, uh, the ripple effect will soon, soon reach to the players, and, you know, when they're hit financially and mentally, then uh, it's, it's chaos, really, for the players.